Hello and welcome to the stately grounds of Compton Verney in Warwickshire, country estate and the epitome of English landscape elegance, created by the famous 18th century garden designer Lancelot Capability Brown. Today, channeling their own capability in a contest of creativity, eight artists will spend the day capturing this idyllic landscape in a bid for artistic superiority. It can only be a brand new episode of Landscape Artist of the Year. Over the course of the summer, 40 artists have been tasked with painting some of the most thrilling scenery that Britain has to offer. From staggering feats of engineering to elegantly sculpted gardens. The view that I've got in front of me is absolutely perfect, she says. Selected from thousands of applicants, they will capture and interpret these magnificent views as their own unique landscape works of art. My worst nightmare. Oh, good! <laughs> I'm thrilled for you, um, and I'm also very sorry. Each artist has just four hours to complete their masterpiece in their chosen medium. I would obviously like another four days. I've got an awful lot to do. Awaiting the winner, a prestigious £10,000 commission from the Manchester Art Gallery to create a piece that celebrates both the natural beauty of England's northwest and its industrial heritage. To be in with a chance of winning, though, they'll need to impress our three formidable judges. It is a bit of a brown, muddy mess at the moment. Yes, it is. So yes. at what point does that start to change? I'm not. I'm hoping very, very soon. Also under the watchful gaze of our judges, at every heat are 50 extra artists, our wild cards, just one of whom will make it to the semi-final. The stuff I do, I call it vibrant realism with an edge. Because you've got your own art movement. So who will fall by the wayside? And who will end up home and dry as the search for the Landscape Artist of the Year continues? Your setup is spectacular. Did you have to get planning permission to build all this? <laughs> of the eight artists contending for artistic acclaim today, five are professionals. Sheila Walsh, Brian Hindmarch, Chloe Letizier, Patrick Wilkins and Angela Webb. I haven't done any practice. I thought I'd keep my powder dry and just see what struck me on the day. Might be regretting that. Joining them are three amateur artists, Afshin Nazir, Justine Warner and Mark Bonello. I'm a HGV driver, so I'm usually driving around, getting to see some really lovely sights, but not actually having the time to paint. So having four hours today, is, I'm, I'm going to relish it. While our artists get in gear for the day ahead, the judges have the chance to inspect their submissions, the originals of which they're seeing for the first time. We have a wall that, like yourselves, is bursting with interest and vitality. <laughs> uh, we start with someone who's clearly interested in skies. I'm completely taken with it. I love the brush strokes and the trees. They're sort of drippy, and then you get the same treatment of the water, and there's a really nice touch of blue that sort of sings. It's well put together. I think it's just a very beautiful evocative painting, really. I love this fantastic use of the red ground because you get a really expressionistic painting. It becomes sort of supernatural, but we know what the place is, but it's done in the most interesting way. It's a tour de force of brick rendering. It's all done with pencil, I think. I mean, it's just absolutely finely executed. It's a love letter to some grubby corner. I get the sense this is an artist that takes no artistic license. This next one's given me vertigo. The composition is fantastic, but it's an exercise in stylization. None of nature is rendered in a realistic form. I just love that sweep of that wave just about to crash. It's very graphic when it tells us exactly what's happening. Next up, Italian pants. Pants or no pants, I want to be there. I'm usually faintly allergic to anything with a kind of touristy twang, but you're right in there. Those shirts are about to hit you in the face. What I find extraordinary is the sense of light coming through the clothes. I don't know how they've done it. 
I feel like there could have been a murder in this one. It just feels filled with melancholy for me. It looks like an etching, it's a bit feathery, so I presume it's dry point. And there's something which makes you feel this place of habitation being overgrown by history and mm. nature. This is such a great painting. You really feel the depressed nature of industry. And then you've got this light colour palette, which actually feels quite charming. I think this artist likes to paint sort of weird stuff. You get a sense of the decaying boats and the decay reproduced in the way the paint is put on. And finally, some fabrics being handled in a really interesting way. I mean, it's just so well structured. There's a painterliness to the way this artist is using the material. When you get up close, nothing falls away by finding out that it's thread and fabric because it's so beautifully done. Here we go, eight artists. Will they, like the three of you, prove to get better and better the more we know them? Oh. Artists, I hope this image of pastoral perfection is to your liking as your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete a winning work of art. Good luck, everybody. Your time starts now. The 120 glorious acres of parkland that stretch out from Compton Verney House bear all the hallmarks of Lancelot Capability Brown. A series of naturalistic, harmoniously composed views. Today, our artists face one of his very best. The East Lawns rolling down to the lake with the neoclassical bridge beyond. This is an exceptionally beautiful landscape. It's very manicured, it's very genteel. There's moments of reprieve, moments of excitement. How do you improve upon nature? Well, Capability Brown succeeded here. And actually the challenge today is for the artist to be able to put their mark on a place which is so already heavily worked upon. So how capable are our artists feeling faced with this perfectly composed English landscape? There's some really beautiful trees out here, really impressive. So I'm just going to really try and get the height in and think about all of that. The bridge for me is great, but I find the green and the trees very overwhelming. I haven't connected with it. I will at the end of the day, for sure. I like to think of myself as painting in fabric because I like to move the fabrics around and to blend with them. All of the fabric that I have with me is dress ties, some of them big patterns, some of them smaller patterns, and I use that with the perspective that I'm trying to create. Yorkshire-born Justine Warner is an amateur artist with a truly unusual method. Placing ties down in layers, she blends them together with coloured thread and uses a heat gun to expose the patterns below, creating complex, expressive works, as seen in her landscape of the Yorkshire Moors. What strange alchemy is going on here, <laughs> Justine? So that would be like a painter putting the ground on a canvas, like the background. And these threads are my equivalent of starting to draw into the fabric. Do you just buy ties in a job lot? I started off like that, but now I'm known as the lady that paints with ties. <laughs> so I can open my front door and in the porch there'll just be a bag of ties that somebody's left for me. Wow. I've always worked with textiles. It's kind of escalated. When I'm driving down the road, I'll see a landscape in ties. In ties? In ties. And when you see a tie on a person, do you see a landscape? Yes. <laughs> it's quite tempting. Just snip that tie. <laughs> I don't normally seek out classical landscapes, but I love some of the elements in front of me. And I was actually an architect, so I'm very attracted to that bridge. Originally from Edinburgh, Angela Webb is a professional artist now based in the Midlands. Drawn to dynamic compositions, her view down a Venetian street painted during a family holiday features her daughter, who joins us gazing up at the geometric tangle of washing lines above. Angela, your submission was incredibly well constructed, but yes. your sketch is very loose. Yeah, I tend to draw with the paint quite okay. quickly. 
I wouldn't normally be attracted to like a great expanse of grass, but I am drawn to a bit of perspective and I like things to be underpinned with a bit of structure. So I thought this was an opportunity to get a bit of... To draw the eye into... ...up towards the bridge via this beast of a tree. Your submissions are square, so do you use the square quite often? Quite often. It feels more bounded somehow for me. I'll let you crack on. Our eight artists aren't the only ones hoping to have the blueprint for success at Compton Verney today. Fifty daring and determined wildcard artists are busy setting up further along the lake's edge. I've brought far too much. Easels, lots of paints, a can of iron brew. <laughs> I wanted a bit of a roll for my paintbrushes and my pens. Couldn't find one that was quite big enough, so I've gone and made my own that has little sections for everything, even my sketchbook. <laughs> I'm an old roadie. I retired and decided to spend my days in the garden painting instead of touring around the world with bands like The Stones, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, all of them, you know. If any of their landscapes strike a chord with the judges today, they could land themselves a place in the semi-final. Paul, did you have to get planning permission to build all this? What's going on? I built a little contraption to create a cover to hopefully stop the rain coming in. And this is all because you like to work on a canvas bigger than my house? <laughs> yes. As the wild cards lay down their first brush strokes, back in the pods, one of our artists is taking steps to ensure she's happy with her own. I'm trying to capture the right composition first as a sketch. If I don't lay out my painting correctly, then no matter how beautiful the actual paintwork is, it's never going to look right. This is a nerve-wracking bit for me. A self-taught artist, today is civil servant Afshin Nazir's first time painting en plein air. Having grown up in Pakistan, she's become smitten with the ever-changing skies of her adopted home, depicted to dramatic effect in her oil rendering of Windsor Great Park. Actually, we're in a capability brown landscape, and he was really specific about where he put trees in order to give an overall composition. Are they in the right place for you? They're no nothing's ever in the right place. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but I see you're working on the two well Antonias in the distance. Oh, yes. And they're waiting down that right-hand side. Did you spot them straight away? Yes, I, uh, very early on, and then it was just a question of I'm just trying to arrange everything in a way that works. And there's something sort of almost like symbolist painting in your art. It's all about mood and yes. atmosphere. Yes, it's definitely not going to be as is. So what mood are you looking for? It's it's going to be moody. Dark and moody. Not too dark. OK, middly mid, dark mid, and moody. Mid, mid, mid moody. It's a busy first out. And this first stage is just finding my way, really. But once you tear the plate over, it'll be, hopefully. Brian Hindmarch, a lecturer from Bradford, has devoted over 50 years to the art of printmaking. His dry point of a wintry western hall follows his tried and trusted process. First, a charcoal drawing on site, then retreating to the safety of his studio to complete the work, a luxury he doesn't have today. Well, I come here as a total innocent. I don't know what dry point etching is. Well, dry point is etching without any chemistry. It's just literally a point scratching into a surface. That's a pen vise with a needle inserted and the beauty of this is you can get very incisive fine lines so you've done the sketch underneath which yeah. so you know where it is yeah. you're using these brutal instruments to cut the pattern of the picture yes it's quite a sketchy pressionistic sort of view but it will get tighter as i move on you can actually rub this off with spirit. that will come off it'll come off and then i'll have a clean plate which i can then ink with various tools i'm not surprised you've done it all your life it seems very gratifying Thank you. Yeah, it is. With the end of the first hour approaching and the skies darkening over Compton Verney, each of our artists is dealing with the consequences of their compositional decisions. My palette choice today, I wanted to consider the sort of dark mood, so hopefully I've captured that a little bit. We've got an expanse of lawn that I was a bit troubled by, but actually there's very faint diagonal mowing lines which are helping me. But I've got an awful lot to do. I would obviously like another four days. I've got the bridge in, I've got the distance in, so I'm now starting to work on the foreground. I feel pressed for time. <laughs> Thank you.
In Warwickshire, eight artists are an hour into their challenge to depict the beautiful Capability Brown design grounds at Compton Verney. And one artist in particular is relishing the opportunity. If I get the chance, I'll paint plein air, but it doesn't really happen that much because I'm on the road quite a lot. At school, my teacher said, Mark, you'll never get anywhere looking out of a window for a living, but that's, <laughs> that's what I do. HGV driver Mark Bonello keeps his kit in the cab of his lorry and paints whenever he has downtime on the road. His atmospheric landscape of a dry dock at Kilkeel in County Down was completed in oils. Mark, from a kind of rusty-looking shipyard to a <laughs> bucolic English landscape. My worst nightmare. Oh, good. I'm thrilled for you. Um, and I'm also very sorry. I mean, it's good to have a challenge. It is. It is. And uh, I, I've got a bit of discoloration and found something to paint. You've zoomed in immediately on yeah, the bridge. And yeah. I, your version of the bridge already, I can tell, is the underbelly of the bridge, the, yeah. the other <laughs> side of the bridge's life that we don't see. Yeah. Um, what attracts you to that kind of narrative? Maybe it's from my job. I get to see a lot of grime and dirt. But the more you look at something that some people might deem as manky, <laughs> you kind of see some, you know, beautiful colours in there. I completely, beautiful shades, I completely you? agree with you. I think the way that you put paint down, it kind of underscores your message. Although you're interested in the kind of darker narrative, your painting style is actually light and yeah. it's good looking. And at the moment, I'm, I'm loving the reflections up off of the bridge, and that's what's really drawing me in. I'm excited to see it through your eyes. I do a lot of tree paintings. These are really impressive. Capturing that and really getting the scale of them is going to be quite challenging. Chloe Letizia's passion for landscapes traces back to her childhood in Guernsey, a place she left at 18 to pursue her ambition of becoming an artist. Her expressionist submission, painted in acrylics over four hours, depicts the shed at the end of her South London garden. Now, Chloe, your submission had this incredibly strong, vibrant red. This is entirely different. You've chosen this enormous tree. I think I have found something there now that I want to work with, which is the branches meeting. I like to capture something that's beautiful but interesting. I'm not just trying to paint the trees. I'm wanting to capture the feeling that you get when you're in it. So many greens, but you've not yet started to diverge from more or less the central green that you have. I've just started to get a different one on, but yes, I'll be building it up now. I think it'll happen hopefully quite quickly now. Thank you, Glow. I'm looking for a fault in the landscape. It's so well composed. I don't know whether Capability Brown could foresee how trees would mature, but everything sits so beautifully together. It's gorgeous. Some of these trees are works of art in themselves. Yeah, it is just fantastic. But totally. here comes the but. <laughs> well, it's fake as hell. It's one-dimensional in its beauty. And how do you make it interesting as an artist for yourself? Because it's an artistic creation already. Yes. And to add your layer of artistic creation on top of that, I don't quite know how they're going to do it, to be honest. I'm looking forward to seeing Kathleen, Kate and Joan coming over that bridge in bonnets. We're the Zarsis here. We're going to have to come oh over that lake. Oh, my God, with okay. Our, no, with our shirts no, sopping no. wet. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. It's hard to think of something that I'm happy with right now. I've got a vague composition, which I've just changed. I wanted to keep the bridge as kind of the focal point, but it wasn't big enough. I'm behind where I wanted to be. A technical illustrator by trade, Patrick Wilkins threw himself into creative drawing a decade ago. His highly detailed, often melancholic, pencil and paint depictions of urban scenes, such as his submission of an alleyway near his Kent home, are meticulously rendered, taking upward of 40 hours to complete. Now, Patrick, I get the sense that you're an artist that has to paint every little detail. That's, yes, that's pretty much true. Everything has to be as it should. So have we given you a curse with every blade of glass here? Pretty much, Good, yes. that's what yes. I'd like to hear. So we're going to make it really tough for you today. Yes. So given what I've been given, the, the bridge is the best I can muster from my usual way of working. You put it quite low. What made you do that? It is quite low. I think I could do something interesting with the sky. So. Oh, yes, because your submission, what I loved about it was that everything sort of emanated from the light. Yes. It was as if the whole thing came out of that. Is that that same sort of feel that you're going to go for today? Um, 
if I can get it, yeah, in the time allowed, I think I can get some sort of moodiness generated from a cloudy sky, uh, although it keeps changing, so it's a bit tricky. It's probably going to have to be semi-imaginary. Also, a bit of artistic licence. I know, it's breaking a all the rules, but... A bit of freedom. <laughs> I normally paint kind of about 120 centimetres high, but just due to the four hours, because I'm very, very slow, I chose to paint small today. Sheila Walsh's dizzying submission of the steps she descends to swim in the sea most mornings took her 30 hours to finish. She works in acrylic on birch plywood to create graphic, abstracted pieces from her studio in Waterford, Ireland. Sheila, it's precision work. Yes. I like straight lines and clean angles, and I'm only on the base. I still don't feel like I'm painting yet. I feel like I'm only still laying a base. Well, that's interesting. The way you draw a landscape is quite artificial. You do yeah. do interesting things with it. So it has to be completely blocked, and then I'll build up areas and blot them back or take out areas. I know today with the time limit, I'll, I'll struggle. But if I at least get the base down, then everything else is just finding shapes with color. It's like a jigsaw. This stage is very beautiful, so I'm kind of intrigued how you evolve it to make it say what you want to say. Yeah, so I hope I can in the time. It's just started a rainy, let's hope it doesn't affect you. In another corner of Compton Verney's grounds, as the heavens open, our wildcard artists are rather more exposed to the elements. It's just already dropping, I kind of quite like it. <laughs> As quickly as it started, the rain stops, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. The rain actually turned my acrylics into watercolours, so I'm trying to work around that. I'm using water mixable oils, so in the shower, a lot of unexpected patches and lines suddenly appeared. I realised the tent's not fully waterproof, so I've got a wet bum now. That rain came out of nowhere. Yeah, but we've had artists in the past who say that the weather has made their work. I think some of them have been really thrown by the weather. I mean, they right. painted something really moody with a grey sky, and now it's bright blue skies. They're deciding whether to change it or not. But I just think they're so admirable, our wild cards. Very dry, considering we've been working driving rain. Back at the pods, and with almost half of the four-hour challenge now up, our artists' fortunes are reflecting the mixed weather. The key part of the picture was the bridge, but I don't think I've done it particularly well. I'm not happy with the way things are going. I would like to be happier. Halfway, it's a bit scary. It's a lot of branches entwined and that feeling of intensity. It's just starting to feel like it's coming alive a bit. That bridge was so difficult. I'm still not 100% happy with it. Ah! <laughs> At Compton Verney in Warwickshire, Eight artists are halfway through reimagining the magnificent vista as their own landscape masterpieces. So a bit of sketching on the sewing machine onto the work, and then I'm going to start on the, the two trees to frame the bridge. But at the moment, it's quite fragmented. I knew that I wanted to pick out some of the clouds, but it was difficult because it was pouring down with rain earlier, but now it's beautiful. I just wish I had more time in between to let the layers dry. I was equally drawn to these lowering trees and that beautiful bridge, so I wanted the eye to be drawn from one to the other. You found these diagonals to pull us forward. Did you do that because you were looking for the drama in the landscape? Do you feel that it's all too tidy? There is a tiny bit of that, yeah. Having spent the morning scoring his composition into an acetate plate, printmaker Brian is ready to reveal his first proof. It's fairly hazy and not quite as strong as I wanted it. I might do one more proof after this. And do what this time? Different? Different paper. Less weight. I need a little bit more definition before I tackle the last stage, which is working with pastel on top of the print. So it's quite an interesting mixture of creative, artistic stuff yes. and technical know-how. If it works. Yeah. If it if works. It works. 
It's not just the perfectly composed landscape that has our artists feeling green today. They also need to contend with the scrutiny of our three judges. So what do they make of progress so far? Halfway time, there's been quite a lot to see already of what they're going to produce. Sheila's is extraordinary. Sheila has to reduce everything in front of her, which is monumental and classical. And then she's puts it into this filter and brings out these shapes. There's a really interesting process at play. But she's trying to play safe today. The painting's very small. And so it feels claustrophobic. Now, Afshin, what do we think so far? Yeah, I think Afshin sort of made a lovely, intense composition. I love the way she worked with all those dark colours first to give us this kind of dramatic contrast. I'm not so sure that Afshin has resolved her painting as much as I would like it. There are these little wonderful passages of paint, but somehow the whole thing isn't coming together yet. There's a danger of simply it being a, a picture of a bridge. We need to elevate it, don't we? Has Mark done that? Mark's looking for something a bit more ugly than what he has here. She's really zoomed in to give us this tight crop. I'm worried that he's taken the bridge too high. He's going to have this race at the end to fill in this huge space, which is going to completely transform the way that bridge actually feels. Now, Chloe, it's very interesting to see her process. I love her mark making, and I love her sense of color and the way she lays paint down. But one of the reasons why we loved her submission was its undoneness. So what level of undoneness are we going to see today? Now, Justine has been busy with that sewing machine. I just came across Justine looking at the reflections under the bridge, and it was just extraordinary to see somebody sewing en plein air. She's masterful at really looking and observing nature, and I think that's going to elevate the work no end. Angela was an architect, and it's something architectural about her picture. I love that dynamic thrust that takes us right up into that top left-hand side of the canvas. I'm slightly surprised that she squashed all the information up there, and we're confronted with a vast expanse of lawn. She has got quite a lot to do with regards to the foreground. Now, Patrick told me he was having trouble with the bridge. Yeah, I think Patrick's having trouble full stop. He is focusing on the bridge. He knows there's something wrong with it. I think he's got the arches wrong. I think Patrick's work lives off a certain density, and that density needs to be built up. For a drawer, you just need to put in the hours. He just needs to get on with it. Well, it is very interesting that today we've got artists who are taking different routes to different outcomes. Mm. So that's going to be hard. Good luck. So no trees, I notice, even though we are surrounded by them. <laughs> uh, have you got a thing about trees? I am going to put some in. There's a little bit of one here and okay. a little bit of one there. Right. Because there's no sky either. No, I'm more interested in foreground. So where do you do your painting? In the truck, oh, usually. in the truck? Yeah, yeah. So you find a bit of grime, park it up, <laughs> sit in the cab and paint once out the front window. Yeah, that's the hard thing. You're driving along and you see something really nice and you, <laughs> there's not many places you can park a 40-foot lorry, so... No, it's not normally in front of a capability brown <laughs> landscape, is no, it? No, no. I've seen you've really got the moodiness of the sky. Clearly, you've spent a lot of time today seeing it misbehave. <laughs> I have, but in some ways, that's, that's exactly what I wanted. I love the way you put your marks down. They've got a lovely sculptural quality to them. The tones sometimes clash with each other. You obviously feel quite comfortable to push and pull yeah. and find equivalents for what you're seeing in nature. Yeah, I don't try to depict it as is when I'm painting it looks quite messy but if I stand back then that's when I see it all come together. together. The beautiful parkland the artists are painting didn't always surround Compton Verney House as it does today. For much of the 1700s the garden design was influenced by trends from Europe. Then in 1768 to keep up with the latest fashion among the English aristocracy Lancelot Capability Brown today renowned as England's greatest gardener, was commissioned for an extreme 18th century garden makeover. Capability Brown was a world leader, really, in the English landscape movement. And what he tended to do was take landscapes and make them into picture-perfect pastoral vistas. The expanses of grass fringed by woodland are a mark of Brown's design. He also planted hundreds of trees and shrubs, including the majestic grey-green cedars of Lebanon. He certainly used different trees knowing the colours that they produced to emphasise the lay of the land and the different points of interest. 
Another signature feature is the curving lake, with its neoclassical bridges, to ensure visitors had the most impressive view as they arrived by carriage. The lake also offered a more practical purpose when Brown added an 18th century must-have to the grounds, an ice house. Ice would have been taken from the lake in the wintertime and stored in the ice house. And the family at the time would have been able to have cold puddings, cold drinks throughout those winter and even into the spring months. Today, the lake retains its practical function with a water source heat pump, warming the gallery inside the house, continuing Brown's legacy of harnessing natural resources on the estate. Following in Capability Brown's footsteps with their own Compton Verney landscapes, our wildcards are nearing the end of their challenge. So it's a diptych? Yes. I really like that tree there. Yeah. And I really like the bridge, so I've, I've tried to do the two. Um, which one did you enjoy painting more? Because, of course, they've both got separate challenges. I think I need to, to work on the bridge a little bit more and actually try to get rid of some of the detail. Get rid of some of the detail? Yes, yes. yes. That's quite surreal. I don't really like doing just greens and blues. The stuff I do is, I call it vibrant realism with an edge. But you've got your own art movement. Wow. <laughs> this is a gorgeous wee thing. Tell me how you've made it. So I've um, started off with watercolour on the fabric, and then I've started to embroider over the top of it. So it's your normal process, painting and thread? No, not at all. This is something I've tried to adapt to, to fit into the time limit. Excellent. So which of our wild cards has the contest sewn up today? There's a woman painting her trees in the opposite bank, very dry. I'm feeling a bit sort of thirsty talking about it, but it's kind of dusty and rather beautiful. I quite like the energy in that diptych. There's a lot yeah, of horizontality, yeah. and I like the oiliness of the paint. I saw them together yeah. early on, and it was like, wow. There's a woman sat underneath a tree with a little watercolour that she's then embroidering on top. Just got to find one lovely wild card. I think there's one that I would champion, actually. Is it the diptych? Yeah, I think it's the diptych. Yeah, I think that's an impressive yeah. day's painting. Well done. Thank you very much. You're a winner. <laughs> Can we try to put them together? That is gorgeous. We loved the way you put paint on, the colours you're using. It's very loose. It really gets a sense of the space here, so well done. When they say that it's good, the judges, it does validate your confidence in yourself. I'm feeling quite emotional, actually, <laughs> but I'm delighted. Helen MacDonald Mathie from Kilmacon near Glasgow will enter a pool of wildcard winners from all the heats, one of whom will be chosen for a place in the semi final. Back on Compton Verney's East Lawn, the eight artists are into their final hour. It is quite chaotic at the moment, but mm. I'm trying to look at the tree and look where the shadow is. Are you going to do anything else to the sky? I'm going to burn back these fabrics here. A lot of that will disappear. I don't think we've ever had anything <laughs> quite like it, Justin. I'm finding the water difficult. I just want to show the flatness with the plane that it's going in. Yeah, water, which is what I normally paint, but not so lovely and flat. I'm just trying to work out how to do the sides of the lake, the undergrowth, and then the water. I have no idea how I'm going to do the water. I'm not feeling brilliant about it. If I overwork it, then that could lose it. But then again, also have to push it. So that's the question. <laughs> In the grounds of Compton Verney, our eight artists are into the final few minutes of their landscape challenge. And for some, the question is when to step away. I'm in that weird place where maybe I should just stop or I'll turn it into something else. I don't know, can't see the wood for the trees quite literally. I'm burning back through the top layers just to reveal the pattern fabric in the background. I was happier with it 10 minutes ago. I do think I've got one too many trees in here. 
I just have a few highlights in the water that I want to pick out and that little bit of blue sky. Today, I'll be forced to stop, so I'm hoping I won't overwork it. Artists, you have five minutes left. This is my third proof. If this one works, I'll do some last minute additions with a little bit of pastel. So much green. I hope it's not too bland. I'm sweating, I'm hot, I'm covered in pain. I don't think I'm going to last. <laughs> and my sewing machine's giving up the ghost. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your equipment and step away from your easels. <laughs> I'm relieved it's over. I was fairly calm at the beginning, and then everything seemed to go horribly wrong, and I was really panicking. As it turned out, it wasn't as bad as it could have been at one stage. Only one artist can make it through to the semi-final, so while they take a hard-earned break, the judges start by narrowing the selection down to a short list of three. Lots of lovely green paintings. They all found the drama in their own ways. I love Brian's submission for the dry point touch and feel. And in trying to work the landscape, I think he's added too much pastel. And so what we've got is color and tone, but we don't get that richness. It's almost as if we're surrounded by the vortex of the branches, and I do get a real sense of that. Angela has managed to keep that dynamic quality. I really, really love the treatment of those trees, but I don't know if I love the, the, the amount of loose paint in the bottom left. I find it's an incredibly well thought through composition, but that sense of having all this empty space to deal with, I think that's where Angela suddenly thought, how do I enliven this? And she did it with a language that isn't present anywhere else in the painting. I love Chloe's greens, I love the luminosity, I love her palette, I love the fact that these trees are sort of writhing. I think it's a rather lovely piece. Chloe's not painting the precise reality of what is in front of her, she's painting an impression of it. The trees are what makes the drama, and she's really taken us in amongst them. I recall Mark's bridge halfway through the day, and I just couldn't see how he's going to make any sense of placing it in a landscape. And I don't know how he's done it, but I understand exactly what he's talking mm. about. He's looking for things which are sort of unexpectedly beautiful. That water's just really beautiful. I think it's got a very quiet energy. It's like a love letter to that bridge, almost. Afshin's painting's a little treasure, isn't it? I mean, it's intense, it's brooding. That sky tells the story of all of the skies we had today. I think Afshin's really good at capturing a sense of mood. It's poetic, it's melancholic, and it is dark. But the yummiest thing is the way the paint is put on. Mm. Yum. Sheila's stuck, you know, with that beautiful stylization and this range of colors that work incredibly well together that she found in the landscape. There's a amount of work required of the viewer, and sometimes I find that work is almost too much. But the way Sheila puts paint on, I think it's very beautiful. Patrick obviously had the choice when he made a submission of what to draw, and today he's done very well in getting this rather beautiful landscape as close to that as possible by giving us something as slightly strange but true to life. I mean, it's a quintessential British landscape on a miserable summer's day. I love the way he's created that sky. I think it's my favorite thing about it. I'm very impressed with Justine because she's given us something very painterly. It's a beautiful landscape. It's today's landscape. I think she's very, very clever at what she does. The range of color and the texture that she brings and the beautiful light that's observed on the bridge between the two trees. I mean, I don't know how she does it. So which three of today's artists will make it onto the shortlist? So... One or the other of these, it feels yes. like. And love these two. So we've agreed on, yeah, those ones. There. OK. Artists, this is the moment when just three of you will learn whether you've made the shortlist for consideration as today's winner. The first artist that the judges have selected is Mark Bonello. The second artist on the shortlist is Afshin Nasir. I 
And the final artist on the shortlist is Justine Warner. Our thanks to all of you and our commiserations to those who didn't make it through. It's been a great day. I hope you enjoyed it. Well done, all of you. If I didn't love the other works so much, I might feel a bit disappointed, but the fact that I finished something was fantastic. No, I'm really pleased. The judges now have the daunting task of selecting today's winner. To give them a hand, they also take the submission works into account. Judges, I don't think we've ever had such divergent work. They're so different one from the other. But they're very strong, aren't they? Like, you get the sense of three individual artists yeah. who know who they are. Mark likes a bit of grime. Well, the only grime he found was the underside of the bridge. But even the way that he's dealt with the underside of the bridge is beautiful, isn't it? I'm amazed it's as good as this, really, given quite a challenging compositional choice. Eliminate the sky altogether. Seeing it next to the shipyard, I realised that the bridge that I thought was too high was actually where he normally starts. Mm. That's where he positions the main part of the action. It's very strange, the narrative he's looking for, to conjure that sort of sense of unease by painting something as he sees it is quite remarkable. Afshin is a big fan of clouds and she's given us another interesting sky today. I mean, they're very, very textural clouds. She plays with light in such a beautiful way, so everything feels exaggerated and emphasised, and therefore you get a very moody painting. She's really revelled in the trees, rooting those two Wellingtonias on the right-hand side. They've got a real presence. It's almost like they're guardians of the landscape. They're a beautiful pair, Afshin's work. Mm. You know, I mean, they are very, very similar in tone and, and mood. And it comes through the way she places paint down. It is just thick and beautiful. The painting itself has a life of its own. And Justine has worked miracles with ties. <laughs> I mean, I'm gobsmacked. For a long time, you imagine that it is a painting with this sort of rich depth and intensity of detail. That bridge is just phenomenal. The water is totally believable. I cannot believe that's material in thread. And it's interesting seeing Justine's submission next to today's work, this complete understanding of light. Both, I mean, it's just bonkers. She doesn't see landscapes now, she sees ties. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing about Justine is, although it's extremely process-driven, she doesn't ever stop looking at the landscape. I think we're really impressed with the way that she is a sort of plein air painter who happens to be using fabric and threads. Well, we could talk all day, but we need a winner. <laughs> Mark, Afshin, Justine, after much discussion and deliberation, the judges have reached their verdict and decided on today's winner. The artist returning to a place in the pods at the semi-final is... Afshin Nasir. It just sort of proves to me that I'm not that bad, I guess, is probably the first thing. Afshin's really good at creating a sense of atmosphere. There's a dreamlike quality to what she made for us today here at Compton Valley. But she added a sense of melancholy and mood, and it just captured our hearts. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for it to sink in, to be honest. I'm still in a little bit, bit of shock. But so happy, so happy. Um, I don't think I can put it in words, really. 